Um, next up, we have Honor Moody. Uh, Honor joined the Harvard Library Information and Technical Services as a metadata creation manager early last year. After many years as a cataloger at the Arthur and Elizabeth Schlesinger Library on the history of women in America, Honor has been interested in Wikidata since she realized it's easier to add statements for Gary Strong's authority toolkit to parse than it is to type a complex 670 in an authority. <laughs> he laughed at that, you're on the right place. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, and I'm going to assume that I have a lot of librarians who will understand some of the Mark shorthand I'm using. I will try to um, say the full name, but it is not um, my native language, it's tags. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I also want to thank Shelly and Karen because I omitted my mark slide and now you've all been forced to look at some. Uh, so I'm going to talk about developing workflows for local authority file conversion from mark to Wikidata. And the work that I'm going to talk about was really inspired by the ARL white paper on Wikidata, which came out in draft form just before Wikisite. Um, and one of the and I'm sort of delighted that there are so many of its authors in the room today. This is and also the final draft, came, final version came out just recently as well, so kind of a nice synchronicity there. Um, and um, so, and, and one of the reasons why the paper was so inspirational was because it kind of gave us permission to think about how we might migrate our large local authority file of about 110,000 authority records. Harvard migrated to a new system in July of 2018. And unfortunately, the new system that we moved to had some built-in authority control and maintenance uh, features that we couldn't take full advantage of if we were to migrate our local data. But we nevertheless did not want to lose this large data set of, that represented years of work on the part of our staff um, and might very well have some really good information in it. So we'd already been thinking about, you know, could we use ISNES, uh, NACO Lite, what, kind of, uh, what kind of methods could we use to kind of extract this data and store it in a format that we could take with us into the future. Um, and so the permission to sort of use Wikidata as a potential store or conversion process was uh, kind of freeing in a way. There's also talk about SNARC, uh, the SNAP ARC ID, which was sort of important to me. I spent a lot of time creating authority records for names that appear in archival collections, the Slitzinger, so that was of interest as well. Um, so with that in mind, I had read the paper while I was procrastinating my Wikisite talk. When we got to Wikisite, um, Christine Eslau and I were kind of thinking about what we could do for a hack day project, do a thon day project, and we, so we wondered, you know, could we use a mark file as a starting point for reconciling with or creating Wikidata entities? Um, and could we gamify the process? Because to be quite frank, a lot of the distributed game uh, mix and match actually you know, distributed game in particular looks a lot like the kind of data that you might get um, out of a 670 in a authority record that's source cited, or a 678, which is a, a public history now. Um, so at Wikisite 2018, we pitched this session. Some great people showed up. Um, special thanks to Andrew and Rob for um, giving us permission to violate constraints, which I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, and we did manage to develop a pilot workflow where we took a mark edit, um, a file that we have of about a, a subset of about 100 authority records from our local authority file that we'd actually already played with in uh, Project Passage, which we had also participated in. Um, and these were Harvard University uh, or organizations, mostly thought to be student groups, although that's not totally true in the end, but that's a different story. Um, and we had, were familiar with Open Refine from the assessment of this authority file that we'd already been doing. So we got Mark Edit into Open Refine. We used quick statements. I understand from Asaf yesterday that that's actually not necessary in the latest versions of Open Refine. So that this is already kind of outdated. And then we did create an item for the Harvard Library Local Authority file, and we created 15 items in batch that really only had an instance of university organization statement and a reference to the identifier from our local authority file. Um, so this is one that we uh, created, the Harvard University Exempt Issues Research Group. Um, I think they did something about exempt staff, but I don't really know, and actually looking at the bibliographic data did not tell me anything else either. Maybe this should have been created. Uh, but this is a good example because this is what they looked like before. There's the property scope 
constraints um, and the potential issues. These are with the use of inventory number for our local authority uh, file identifier. So we left Wikisite with some homework. We were going to document the test file process, hand code the initial set to identify maybe some of the issues or where the candidates for gamification really occurred, set up a distributed game, generalize for use by other institutions, and get feedback from the Wikidata community. So um, yeah, turns out Christine and I are both pretty busy people, and that this was a little bit more involved than we thought. So what actually happened? Not quite all of that. Um, so we investigated setting up a distributed game. There's a great video of Mar Marcus Mansky in Brazil talking about how all you need is little coding skills. So you might need a specific kind of coding skills, not just any coding skills. Um, and you will need your own, and the method we were doing really required your own server, which is in server space, which is a whole separate issue. Uh, so that wasn't, didn't really quite work out. And we did a lot more analysis of that local authority file and it revealed messier than expected data. So we had less data there that was potentially useful. Out of that 110,000 local authority records, fewer than a quarter actually even had a 670 at all. And of the ones that did have either a 670 or a 678, only about 3,000 of them had really potentially useful data. We had a lot of uh, authority records with 670, which is the title of the work. Um, and occasionally the subfield B, I noticed a lot of TPs and nothing. So, um, so that was, I think, made me think that maybe there's a, this is more of a long tail process for extracting useful data. Um, but, and maybe gamification is too much work for one institution to do on its own. So we also, I did do some hand coding and additional analysis of the 15 batch created items. There were two more that were created manually. These had previously been created in Project Passage. Um, and we have a somewhat cleaner version of process documentation that Christine did at a presentation for an internal audience. Uh, and then this is just a quick look at the count of properties. Um, you can see these, the ones that are on your right are the, um, the two at the very end are the hand-coded ones, and the, the third to the right is one that's related to one of those hand-coded ones that had additional data added from the bibliographic record. And you can see there are two in the middle that really, even after looking at bibliographic data and the authority data, I couldn't say anything more about them except that they existed. So this leads us to kind of like what scaling this project would look like, and that looks like data cleanup, everybody's favorite. Um, so the first thing to ask is, um, should we keep that? Uh, you know, if you have no source cited and you have no history note in your records, you know, can you really, are you, do you really have verifiable data that would be helpful, right? Maybe you have some dates in a text string, but you know, are they useful? Are they verifiable? On the other hand, there might be certain circumstances where you would want to keep them if you had a do not confuse with note because that is an important piece of data that will disambiguate an identity. Um, additionally, if they're associated with a high number of bibliographic records or finding aids and you're likely to be able to get more data out of those, maybe there's a, a case to be made. And you might actually want to extract sets with minimal data for special enhancement projects if you think that maybe local entities so finally, uh, this is not finally, this is just in the middle of the data cleanup. Uh, support and entry and corporate body headaches require careful analysis. Shocking no one who does authority work. Um, and I think there's, this also gets to the question of should I stay or should I go. Uh, we created a lot of variant headings uh, as convenience, uh, basically convenience headings when the uh, Left Acre Browse Index ruled supreme for discovery. You know, maybe we don't need to take some of those with us. Also, uh, direct entry headings can normalize to the uh, subordinate entry headings as well. So that in an automated process, you may end up with the same uh, label and alias. And that's clearly not ideal. Additionally, um, you know, do we need to bring with us every DEPT and department spelled out fully? I don't think so. Also, here's a question. If we use it in a market, if you use it solely as a reference convenience access point in an authority record, is it really an alias? I would say no. Um, oh, and I, I'm going to go back quickly because I forgot to talk about organizational modeling. Uh, it turns out that it's complicated. We don't do it well, and Wikidata doesn't do it all that well either. There are clear use cases for, I think, um, 
a high degree of granularity. There's a guy who was somewhat regularly on the PC listserv named Chris Baer, who's at the Hagley Library at the University of Delaware, where he's got a lot of corporate archives, and he really needs to know very clearly about the fiduciary and legal relationships between sub-entities of a larger organization. Um, NACO catalogers are explicitly instructed to omit levels of hierarchy when creating names, right? We intentionally obfuscate the true nature of the relationships of the entities. And do we really want to carry that forth, that process forth with us? So here again, um, this is thinking about what kinds of data cleanup we would need to get this to scale. I think we're going to need a lot of regular expressions to extract dates from our textual data. And I actually think that might be as good uh, or get the majority of it in lieu of, say, a distributed game. So, but we would need, so what I'm thinking of when we get a package that we can sort of send out to the community, it would include regular expressions for the common kinds of textures we would see, B dot space, four digits, board space, ooh, I've got to move quickly. Um, and so I'm just going to skip that and go right into snap reconciliation, which I built in as part of my hand coding. I found four without, two I'm suspicious of, and warrant further investigation. It had more than one constellation, and the Harvard Athletic Association had 14 SNAP constellations. So clearly not ideal. This has to do with how SNAP associates dates with entities based on mark data from WorldCat. Uh, I chose the preferred ARC ID as the one that I could identify with the largest aggregation of materials. Um, I do have questions about what how SAC does um, duplicate resolution. Will my SAC ID still reference the new one if it is not chosen as the preferred ID? Um, SNAP does seem to have a rewrite API, so one question is whether or not SNAP duplicate resolution could be built into this workflow. I would also highly recommend that anybody doing this work in the future might want to think about updating their OCLC records to match what they have in their local file. I found significant divergence in the data in our local copy and its equivalent record in OCLC, which is what was used to create the SNAP ID or the SNAP identity. Um, to the point where sometimes they're not recognizably the same thing, unless you happen to know how your systems interacted over the years. I have a second slideshow about that. Um, and then uh, finally, I, these are the additional areas for development that would, I think, take this from a kind of um, exploratory project into something real that could be uh, handed out or adapted for other uh, libraries and institutions. And so this would look something like a manual for mark authority conversion and ingest into OpenRefine that would be packaged with the most common regular expressions you'd be likely to use to extract data from 670s and 678s. Additionally, I do think this process could be adapted for the 545 or biographical history note in a mark record or its equivalent EAD tag or biohist note, um, where, which will have similar kinds of information in them and probably even have the same expressions could be used for those as well. I do want to see the best practices for a degree of incidental entity creation. Um, right, how far out do we go when we're creating one entity, but there are other entities identified or associated with <coughs> in the record that we have, as well as kind of, you know, how granular do we want to get with archives at? Uh, Harvard Library has many constituent parts, not all of them have a wiki data enti entry. Um, I went with Harvard Library, Harvard University Archives is one that did it, and that was where the majority of these particular headings came from. Um, and actually, the Countway Library of Medicine is a, kind of a disaster in Wikidata. It actually conflates two separate institutions that are housed in a single building. Um, they have a complicated relationship. It's changed over time. How do we best express that? Um, so maybe not today, but sometime in the future. Or maybe somebody in the audience right now could take care of that. Um, uh, and then additionally, it, the information is all there on their website. Um, and finally, I think we might want to look at collaborative access to server space for sets of data. Smaller sets of data provided by many institutions might give us a uh, sufficient um, kind of data set to make a distributed game worth the time and effort of setting up. So uh, this wasn't a presentation about a project that we have con uh, completed. Instead, it is a plea for collaborators, I suppose, um, especially if you've got those strong regular expression skills, knowledge of APIs, um, and you know any other number of things. Uh, also, you know, strong project management skills and a lot of free time. <laughs> so, um, thank you all so much.
give you so much honor. Uh, we have uh, we have again a few minutes for questions. Um, I'm just going to add an editorial comment that in Wikidata, uh, parent-child relationships are very poorly modeled and implemented. So uh, help needed there. And archives add needs a lot of help in terms of modeling. And I've talked candidly about this in the past, but we could talk about it some more. So. Say your, say your name. Oh, hi, I'm Rob Fernandez. Um, and I uh, chipped in on this in a very small way on Wiki site. But um, how much of a problem is the constraint with the snack, with the duplicate, with the uh, more than one snack identifier? Because I ignore that constraint all the time. So I'm a cataloger, <laughs> right? Um, I there's certain rules that I feel comfortable following. Um, you know, I will make exceptions occasionally for certain things I feel strongly about. But in general, I like to do what the system wants me to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I had thought about, so I, I did consider that. I was like, do I add all of the snack IDs? And then here's a big red flag that snack could go out and query on and find their duplicates themselves, right? If I've but it was also a lot of work to go out and verify for, for the 14. I, I, there might be a couple of them that I didn't go all the way out and check every record because my eyes get glazed over at that point. Um, you know, I think that's um, somewhat challenging to do manually. I don't know if that answers your question. I mean, in a way, but yeah, I was going to make the same point that you did. Like, you could run a query and yeah. find all those duplicate snack or buy app or whatever duplicates. Yeah. And so that could be provide some use, but yeah, it is very time to be doing it manually, absolutely. I might also have some resentment about some of the choices that Snap made about associating <laughs> dates with entities, and I don't necessarily feel that it's on me to clean up their mess, but um, <laughs> that's maybe a separate issue. Uh, so yeah. And, and, and I think that there is, so so in the app also has, throws up tons of constraint violations because there's supposed to be one and only one the app, and if you've worked with the app, you know that that's just not really necessarily even realistic um, because of the merging of the different perspectives of national authority files. So, you know, are, you know is, it, is it reasonable to expect that all of those things are going to get pushed upstream and you'll have one the app to rule them all? Um, so we get questions about this all the time, and I think that you have the Wikidata community thinking that they're, you know, doing this helpful cleanup work on our behalf, and that, and that that's going to, you know, action will be taken. Um, whereas it's very, it's very. I think we need to talk about if that if that's kind of like a mutually agreed upon goal by both sides, then that's then that's a cool thing. But I think that you need to kind of take this discussion outside of the system and talk about. What is the what is a reasonable and beneficial mutually beneficial workflow for? Because I see a lot of frustration with people saying, "I keep adding the apps, and you're not taking action on them." Um, so, same and Snap could be similar. You know, are they looking to Wikidata as a place where uh, reconciliation and retribution happens? <laughs> <laughs> Even from Qatar National Library, uh, I, you mentioned that you prefer to have the ARC ID in your project. We are also about to prefer the ARC ID, but what are the reasons? Because you have many archival materials like us or Yeah, so most of our archives uh, do have some representation of the ARC ID. Uh, in this particular instance, the subset of authority files I was looking at was heavily skewed towards archival collections intentionally. Um, and it was more the issue that I would find multiple ARCs for the same entity. So then I had to choose one. Um, so I did tend to choose the one that had the most stuff associated with it, or the one that seemed like the real um, records of, in a kind of formal snack way, that would be the privileged, I think, sort of source of my data for that description. Um, I did would have chosen other IDs if I thought they existed. Since we had done some preliminary reconciliation, I knew that these didn't exist in LCNAF. Um, or, nor were they, because they were in our local file that was pretty siloed, I didn't expect to see them elsewhere. Um, so I'm 
and that was but SNAP had access to them mostly through the mark representation in WorldCat, not from our local data, which would often, you know, was considerably different. Did I answer? Did I answer your question? That's okay, thanks. I just want to make one comment. This is Karen Smith here. She brought it again. And I've spent quite a few time also with BF and so forth. And the linked data survey for implementers, one of the comments they've made is you cannot, cannot possibly underestimate the time you're going to have to spend on data cleanup. No matter how good your algorithm's in, there's always going to be a need for manual review. And that's been referred to in several of these presentations. And BF, yes, my college classmate pointed out we had three BF clusters for her because each one was associated with a different work and she publishes more than three works. So yes, okay, she was a college roommate, fine, I merged them for her. But, um, <laughs> but, but it comes up all the time, you know, it, it's just that it, it can only work on the data that's there. The data itself can be inconsistent, incomplete, too sparse to make comparisons. There's always going to be, I mean, I mean, no matter how well you can make the algorithms, let's hope for an 80, 20 thing, but that 20% for manual, tedious and boring as hell, but... It's not boring for everybody. Okay. <laughs> Just, even you said your eyes glazed over, though. I would, that might have been more going back between SNAP, WorldCat, my local system, uh, you know, and if uh, you built in the API for SNAP to pull them in and I didn't have to keep flipping back between tabs, maybe that would be better. Okay. Um, I do think that's why I'm calling out attention to Open Refine, where I think you can build in the, like so much of this data cleanup with uh, pretty easily and in ways that I think would scale across organizations. Yeah, it will reduce the amount of bank review for sure. We've used Open Refine ourselves. I'm just saying that there'll still be this segment that will still need manual review, and that work cannot be underestimated. But gamifying might make it at least more fun than tedious. Right. Or you do a few of them and it's quick, and then you go do something else for a while, right? Instead of sitting there, you know, in some sort of cataloging line. Uh, Thank you so much, Honor, for uh, providing. Uh, so much useful information and for Potter. So thank her again.